Austin, Texas is known for many things. Live music, an eccentric arts community, and the seat of Texas government. But few realize the city was also host to the grisly murders of one of America's first serial killers. This is the macabre tourist. December 30th, 1884. 25-year-old Molly Smith lies asleep. Near midnight and without warning, Molly is attacked and dragged out into the cold and left to die. A trail of blood in her wake. She was discovered behind her employer's home with a gaping axe wound in her head. As shocking as this brutal murder was, it was only a taste of what was to follow. As 1885 dawned, Austin was emerging as a modern metropolitan city. After the years of struggle following the Civil War and Reconstruction, the population exploded and modern amenities were everywhere. Construction was underway on a large state capitol building, the Driscoll Hotel would begin construction with great fanfare, and many called Austin the Athens of the West. But 1885 would be far from the gilded age the city had hoped for. In early May, another murder takes place. Eliza Shelley, a cook for the Johnson family, is attacked in her bedroom in front of her two children. The murderer again used an axe and nearly split Eliza's head in two. The children were so traumatized they could give no account of the killer. Three weeks later, a third African-American servant, Irene Cross, is attacked and killed. A reporter described her as looking as if she had been scalped. In September, 11-year-old Mary Ramey is raped and murdered with an iron rod stabbed through her ear. That same month, Gracie Vance and her boyfriend, Orange Washington, were killed with an axe, Gracie being described by the Austin Daily Statesman as her head almost being beaten into jelly. All of these women were African-American servants. The police arrested scores of African-American men, anyone from former boyfriends to husbands of the victims, or anyone else who seemed connected. Some thought the murderers could be part of a gang. However, elected officials refused to believe this could be the act of just one man. No more murders were reported until Christmas Eve, 1885. But within the span of a few hours, Austin socialites Susan Hancock and Eula Phillips were found dead in separate locations, both attacked brutally with an axe. The killer was breaking his pattern. Word quickly spread as the city became chaotic. Anyone could be a target. Some even considered the killer had supernatural powers and burned candles to protect themselves from evil. Those less prone to the supernatural armed themselves and braced for the worst. But just as quickly as it all started, the killing stopped, and the killer was never found. Other than the newspaper articles that only speculate on the facts, very little is known about what actually happened. There is speculation that a cook named Maurice who was employed at the Pearl House in 1885 and left in January 1886, could have been responsible. The Pearl House was in the immediate neighborhood of most of the killings, and all went quiet when the cook took employment on an ocean liner and left Austin for good. The story was all but forgotten, mainly because of another killer who came along a few years later and overshadowed these events. This time, however, the killer was not in Austin, but in the Whitechapel district of London. Could there be a connection between Jack the Ripper and the servant girl Annihilator? Even after the killing ceased, Austin was on high alert, 
and still sought to prosecute an alleged murderer. Moon towers were erected around the city to flood light onto dark city streets and discourage would-be killers from striking again. Writer O'Henry, whose real name is William Sidney Porter, was living in Austin during this time. He writes that town is fearfully dull, except for the frequent raids of the servant girl annihilators who make things lively in the dull hours of the night. Until next time, Momento Mori. Thank you.